तत्रापश्यस्थितान पार्थ पितृन अथ पिता महान आचार्यान मातुलान भ्रातृन पुत्रान पौत्रान सखीं तथा शशुरान सुहृदश्चव सेनोरुभरपी we are in the middle of the first chapter which has 46 texts so we are right in the middle in text 26 now so among the two armies krishna and arjuna have come in the middle so krishna is here as the charioteer arjuna to him and arjuna from here is observing everyone and what he seeing is described tatra apashyat so he saw and what did he see he saw an entire array of generations it was a war that was not just spanning not just between cousins you know this war was at one level a fratricidal war because brothers or cousins were fighting hmm? but it was not just cousins now he is using the more intimate word over here brothers but then above then there were fathers he is using the word fathers generically that their father they are from his father's generation arjuna's father is not alive but then there is his grandfathers also the so bhishma is there and there are some other people from his generation and then his sons arjuna does not have many sons he has two two sons mainly but he's there are so many others who are just from my son's generation so they are like my sons and in this way as he is seeing all this there are <clears throat> at least with respect to some of them there are even grandsons over there so with so many generations of characters is seeing now we could go into the list of the names of who is from which generation but that's of is for those who are interested in the history but our interest here is primarily on the the emotional impact that for arjuna he sees he knows that there is going to be a war and he is going to know that he knows that the war is going to be between family also but the reality the gravity the brutality of it all it registers in his mind when he sees so apatra apashyat when he sees on seeing the reality of it the gravity of it the brutality of it it all registers and and is at that point how does it impact him in one sense uh, we will look at this this particular dilemma a little bit more about the heart wrenching aspect let's uh, see what arjuna speaks further so arjuna's speech contains several things so now uh, right now he has not spoken it just so the, we know the gita is a conversation between sanjay and dhritarashtra within which there is a conversation between between krishna and arjuna so periodically it's like a background the narrator narrative steps backward so generally when two people are speaking just their speech is described but when people do something okay you walk from here to there so describe that the narrative steps backward so the narrative step backward over here now now it is arjuna's pers- what he is seeing is described and then what he is feeling is described briefly but then it's like the stage is given to arjuna so that his words reveal his feelings tan samiksha sakanteya sarvan bandho navastitan krupaya paraya vishto vishidanidam abravit तान 
समीक्षा सकाउंटे य In this series of verses, uh, vision is emphasized quite a bit. That vision is, in one sense, external. From outside, vision can affect our emotion. Vision can affect our <clears throat> intention. Vision can affect our discretion. so we will talk about this in terms of the gita's model of the self that emotion is associated with the mind discretion is associated with the intelligence and intention is associated with more with the soul the person that person decides what i am going to do so all of these can be affected i may be rushing say to a meeting and if i see on the side somebody maybe a beggar lying wounded Or a small child uh, with a swollen belly and uh, matchstick-like arms and a sunken face. I may just stop. Oh, maybe I should give some food to this child. So our perception affects us. So what our vision eventually these affect our action. So here it is. Arjuna's tan samiksha sa konte. He saw. Sarvan bandhu navastan. So the, all of them are relatives over there. So he became overcome by great emotion. So overwhelming emotion came over him, and that emotion. What was that emotion? Vishidan. It is described as lamenting. It was lamentation, and that lamentation with those he started speaking out. So this is the transition from perception to emotion. Now, sometimes when we see a person coming to a particular situation, we can even see that the person is visibly affected. Some people may try to put a stoic face. But some people are shaken. So, in one sense, the narrator is telling that there is a visible effect on Arjuna. He is overwhelmed. But when a person is emotionally affected by something. we don't really know okay they are affected i know this situation affected them but what are they thinking what exactly affected them but now we get a glimpse into his heart we see the emotion but what is the exact cause of the emotion that is what will be articulated in the subsequent verse verses so here we have arjun uvach So whenever the Gita starts speaking, "uvacha" is said. That phraseology comes often. Arjun uvacha, Krishna mam swajanam Krishna yutsum samupasthitam idanti mama gatrani mukham cha parishushyati. There are a series of verses. Let me let's read all of them, and then we will discuss the meaning. Vipatushya shari re me Roma harshish chajayate Gandhi vam shramsate hastat vakchayva paridhayate. Concludes his description of his condition in this verse. Nacha shakno mya vastha tum brahmati vache me mana ha nimittani cha pashyami vipari tani ke shava. here if you look at the verses arjuna is describing his condition arjuna's words if we consider so first two he describes his physical symptoms now these physical symptoms 
any way in any person if we hear them oh my limbs are trembling my skin is burning we will be concerned you understand that this person is severely affected but what makes it even more significant is that these are in a warrior now warriors warriors in some ways have to be they have to be tough a tough means that they have a great capacity to both endure pain and not only endure pain but also conceal pain endure pain in the sense it's just a part of the job they are going to get injured they are going to get wounded and conceal pain means sometimes even when pain is there they won't show it because that is seen as a sign of weakness if say two people are playing a boxing match and one boxer just throws a punch and that just touches the knee of the other uh, the jaw of the other person and the other person winces oh some injury over here from the past i can hit it here hit where it hurts that's the standard strategy confrontation hit the person where other person where they are the weakest and then you can destroy them from there so therefore it is important for warriors to conceal their pain even if there's some injury at least in the middle of the battlefield don't show the injury don't show the pain that way the opponent will think yeah this person is still strong and formidable and will not swoop in for the kill the vulnerability is immediately they will be exploited and so the, now what is significant is that arjuna is in the middle of the battlefield so it's not just if you consider arjuna situation he is on the battlefield and he's not just uh, on the battlefield not just one of the soldiers on the battlefield he is a leader on the battlefield and he is in the middle of the battlefield that means you could this is the point of maximum visibility at this point when he is describing all these things now he could say he is speaking this to krishna and uh, the other people are at a significant distance they are not hearing it yeah, even if we grant that still the point is these things are happening to him and he is not saying that i am trying to control them he says it's just beyond my control when he is describing these physical symptoms this indicates the the immensity of the impact that is there the so for a warrior itself if that warrior is showing pain that indicates that there must be some real big pain over there and a warrior on a battlefield a warrior who is a leader and who is in the middle where the, everybody is forces the opposing forces the opposing forces see is they will swoop in for the kill if his forces see it they may become demoralized but in spite of all that arjuna when he is this immensity of the impact that is described over here it is that is there's clear visible physical symptoms that can talk uh, gives a hint of the severity of the angst so the impact is physical symptoms sometimes we do understand how much a person is uh, in pain from the physical symptoms so this is setting up uh, the the stage for the subsequent discussion so arjuna is having a severe problems is an immense pain and so this is basically conveyed through the two verses 28 and 29 he was fearless and he was fearless you could say you could add that he is not just a leader he was the leader the biggest warrior so the fourth factor over here which shows the extraordinariness of the pain that he is going through and in this situation now he is articulating okay what's affecting you so much i can see that you are you're overwhelmed but what caused it that he describes in the 30th text 
नच शक्नोम्य अवस्था तुम भ्रमतीव चमे मन सो इसलिए माई माइंड इज रीलिंग इट्स जस्ट आई एम शॉक्ड एंड कांट स्टे हियर Why can't you stay here? He is saying that I am seeing causes of inauspiciousness everywhere, everywhere. Vipari taani ke shiva. So causes of inauspiciousness. What it means is he is seeing that something. It's all terrible over here. So like sometimes when say we are going down a dark alley alone. and something inside us tells us don't go there i've got a bad feeling over here so i've got a bad feeling so he's telling that i've got a terrible feeling and not just one i can see that everything what i'm seeing it's it's terrible so causes of inauspiciousness here it means that so if i am at a particular place over here and if i see that the road ahead there might be he will talk about if let's assume there are two roads but if there are whatever roads are there over here if all that one sees is that there's disaster maybe there is a building collapsing there is a there is a earthquake occurring or whatever it is there are all kinds of disasters everywhere and maybe there is a there is a snake over here maybe there is a flood coming in over here these are all signs that there is big danger over here and the question is how did all this happen i'm seeing all signs of impending disaster so inauspicious might seem to be like inauspicious might seem like more religious kind of word but you could use the word i'm seeing impending disasters all around me and the tendency is at this yes come there to fight but his feels what is the point of this fight this is just horrible he says i am unable to stay over here so it's almost his tendency is that better i leave from here i can't stay he's not physically going away but he's saying i just can't stay here so the subsequent verses will describe what is he seeing as inauspicious over here what are the disasters that he is seeing that is affecting him so much but gen- uh, generally you know, if we consider the language of negotiations sometimes when there is like a lose lose situation no matter what i want to do i just end up losing then there's i'm out of here just get out i don't want to be a part of this itself uh, so that's that's i want, i just want out of here that's what he is telling in this particular text so in this particular series of verses we discussed mainly three points first is we talked about how what was arjuna's perception his perception was that this was not just a fratricidal war but it is like a multi generational fratricide fratricidal war was about to happen a war among brethren among among the family itself and when he sees this then there is a there is a is the effect that is emotional and that is conveyed through the physical symptoms so the physical symptoms that are there they are they are alarming in themselves that the limbs are trembling the skin is burning but they are all the more so they are alarming in anyone but even more all the more so in a warrior so the immensity of the agony that he is going through you can say that he's it's all the more so because he's a warrior he's a leader you could say he's not just a leader he is he is the leader he's a peerless is a peerless warrior and he is in the middle the point of maximum visibility so the emotions are so high that he just not able to control them and then he is telling not only how he is feeling but he is also telling out what he is thinking of doing he says this 
I see only disasters. I don't see any good anywhere. And therefore, my mind is reeling. I just can't stay over here. So this is like a almost existential angst for him. We'll talk about how it is existential, but at this point, it was. It's you can say it's at this point, it's an emotional angst, an unbearable emotional angst, and he just feels, "What am I doing over here?" So it's for him. He's seeing a lose lose situation. So what he is thinking will articulate in this in the next verses. Thank you.